Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming June of 2016 regional auction. And there is a batch of two here that I wanted to look at because these have the distinction of being the world's first double action only automatic pistols. These are Little Tom pistols, which kind of sounds like a stupid name for a pistol, except that it does kind of make sense. These were developed by a Czech arms designer named Alois Tomiška, whose last name in Czech basically means Little Tom, hence the name. He was born in Czechoslovakia, although it wasn't Czechoslovakia at the time, in 1867, and ultimately lived until 1946 when he passed away in Prague. So he really had the opportunity to see, in an interesting way, he saw basically the full cycle of semi-auto arms development. Should be pretty interesting. Now, he worked as an arms designer for a number of different companies. By the end of his career, well, after these were done, uh, he was working for the CZ company. Uh, he had a hand in the development of the CZ 22 and 24 and 27. Um, and of course, he did some of his own designing, as evidenced by these two. Now, he patented some of the major features in these all the way back in 1908, but didn't actually put them in, into production for another decade. It was after World War I before he started actually making these. Why exactly? I'm not sure. Um, there are a number of things that are still a bit of a mystery about the Little Toms. Now these guns were made in two different locations. They were made in Austria and they were made in Czechoslovakia. In 1918, uh, Tomiška had moved to the city of Pilsen in Czechoslovakia, and it's believed that that's where he started making the first guns, although not very many. Uh, pretty quickly, by 1920 or 1921, he had, again, depending on the source, either founded or partnered with a firm called the Wiener Waffenfabrik in Vienna to manufacture these guns for him. And what we do know is that the significant majority of these pistols were actually manufactured by Wiener Waffenfabrik. You'll find these guns with both Czech and Austrian proof marks, which makes them kind of interesting. Um, the serial numbers are known to go as high as uh, like 52,000, although it's suspected that only about 35,000 guns were actually made, that there are some big gaps in the serial number range. Now these are both 25 caliber versions that's the more common type. Uh, he did also make one in 32 ACP, which is quite a lot bigger and quite a lot scarcer. So there are a number, there's more to these than just the, uh, the double action only feature. So why don't we go ahead and take a closer look at them because the way the magazine works is also a bit unusual. So we have two of these, as I mentioned, and that's cool because it lets us look at a couple of differences between them. The most obvious visual distinction between the two is that the trigger guards are actually slightly different. And this is one of the, the bigger of the, uh, the variances in Little Toms. Now, these are both uh, Wiener Waffenfabrik production guns, so they both have a WWF logo. Uh, this one has a Little Tom grip panel on the other side. This one just has another WWF. The, uh, the Czech Pilsen produced guns uh, should have wood grips on them, either possibly with or possibly without a little AT Alois Tomiška uh, medallion or logo in the grips. So the first thing I want to show you here is loading. I have gone ahead and locked the slide open. You could insert the magazine from the bottom, as one might expect. You can also insert the magazine from the top. Now the idea here was that you would actually insert the mags from the bottom and in theory you can use one magazine to push the existing magazine up and out of the gun like so. That's an interesting idea, but not particularly practical, I don't think. There's a reason that nobody else has ever done that. Now it's also interesting to note that the original magazines for the Little Toms are brass, uh, pretty distinctive. This one appears to be an aftermarket production magazine that someone has fabricated from another style of magazine, uh, but it appears to work, so it's not like you can run out and get spare Little Tom magazines anywhere you want. I've seen examples of these both in 25 and 32 in brass, which is, that's, that's pretty cool. All right, now let's take a look at disassembly so that we can see the mechanism in here. First thing we're gonna do is engage the safety, rack this, that locks the slide open. Then one of the features that Tomiška had patented was his barrel attachment method. To take the barrel out, we simply push it back 
and it drops out of the gun. You can see that there's an oval ended lug here that locks into this matching uh, dovetailed slot in the frame. So barrel comes out very easily. Then this whole process is easy. Then you disengage the safety. The slide will come right off the front of the pistol. There's the slide, recoil spring and guide rod come out and then you have the frame. Now there's a little cover plate here that covers the bottom half of the uh, the actual trigger mechanism. So I'm going to pop that plate off. There we go. There's our cover plate. Now we can see what's going on with the actual trigger mechanism. So what Tomishka did here is pretty clever. First off, his recoil spring is also acting as his trigger return spring via the guide rod here. So that's that's an important element because you have to have pressure on this in order for everything to work the way it ought to. Now, right, if I take off the trigger bar here, you can see that we have a hammer and it's got its own spring right in there. This hammer hits the back of the frame, hits the firing pin, fires the gun. Now in order to move the hammer, we have this guy, little tensioning spring for it right there. Put that into the hammer, lift that up out of the way. Now our trigger has a hook right here that catches on that trigger bar and it's going to pull the bar forward which because of this pivot pulls the hammer backwards. Now the first bit of this mechanism, which is a very good idea, is this little hook. That is basically a half cock, that's a safety notch. So you can pull the hammer back just slightly, that brings it out of contact with the firing pin so that if you hit the back of the hammer on something it won't accidentally discharge the gun. Pushing the hammer forward requires this bar to go backwards and you can clearly see that that hook prevents it from doing so. So this is our safe carry position for the pistol. Then as you continue to pull the trigger back, it pulls this bar forward which pivots the hammer back and it's going to keep going until this slips off the bottom of the trigger bar. Just like that. Now once the gun has fired, the trigger is no longer connected to the, the bar, the trigger is, the hook is all the way up front here, so because we have spring pressure pushing on it from the main spring, that's going to push it backwards and it resets right there, the trigger hooks onto the bar again. So this acts as the disconnector, preventing you from firing more than one shot with a single, single trigger pull. Now I mentioned that this is double action only. The way that works, even if we have the hammer cocked here, we're going to have spring pressure on the trigger from the mainspring and that's going to push the trigger all the way back to this full travel position. The trigger connecting bar here is hooked on this second hook, so it's the same, same hook as for the half cock, but now it's at full cock. But you still have to pull the trigger all the way through its uh, travel until it gets here. Now at that point, instead of the end hook on the trigger providing the, uh, the, the means to pull the trigger, instead what we have is this little guy which is going to push this connecting bar up like that and release it to fire. So depending on whether the hammer is cocked or not, you'll have two different mechanisms for actually firing but they both give you the same length of trigger pull either way. Quick demonstration, when I fire the pistol, the hammer comes all the way down, hits the firing pin and fires, and then I can pull the trigger just slightly to right there and bring it back to the half cock notch. You can also do that manually with your thumb. At this point the gun is now pretty much safe because pushing on this isn't going to hit the firing pin and then when you go ahead and pull the trigger, your double action trigger pull begins. Now I said we were going to look at some of the markings. This is a pretty early gun, uh, serial number 7000, and it's blank on this side. Our other one is a later production issue, uh, 27000, and it is marked uh, Wiener Waffenfabrik uh, Little Tom 6.35 millimeter. It's hard to see there, but there you go. Back on the other side, they're both marked Wiener Waffenfabrik, 
however, this one has some additional export markings that made in Austria is something added when it was exported. And when we look at the proof marks here, that NP is an Austrian proof mark. I believe 22 indicates that it was proofed in 1922. Then on the other earlier pistol, this again has an Austrian proof mark. I believe that's 1921. And in 1921, and maybe early 22, it, it's a little bit unclear. I believe this is uh, like a, a number, a proofing number, as in perhaps how many guns had been proofed up to that point. That's something that didn't stick around very long uh, in Austrian proof marks, but we see it on this pistol and not on the later one. So unfortunately for Tomischka, uh, while 35,000 guns cannot be seen as any sort of failure, that's really a substantial quantity of guns, uh, unless he was, had some bad arrangements, he would have made a good amount of money on that. However, he didn't really get the full potential of what he could have with the double action trigger system. The first gun that was, is commonly known as a, with a double action trigger would be the Walther PP. And that gun proved to be phenomenally successful. Now it was in 32, it's, it has some definite advantages over the Little Tom. And it's unfortunate for Tomishka that he wasn't able to evolve this pistol into something a little bit better and maybe had he done it a little better he could have prevented the Walther PP from becoming as popular as it did. He could have taken that place himself. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. We got to take a look at kind of a, a landmark gun in trigger mechanism design which is I suppose a somewhat nerdy subject but it's cool to see two of these and to be able to take one apart and see how they actually work. So these are both being sold as a single lot here at Rock Island. So if you're interested in having them yourself, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on the two pistols and you can see their pictures and their description. And if you like what you see, you can place a bid right through their website. Thanks for watching.